All right, as Democrats sure. argue the Constitution is under attack by President Trump, they're also saying it's outdated, and they've got some of these really progressive ideas to radically change it. So let's debate. With Fox News contributors Doug Schoen and Carl Rove and senior VP at America Rising, Alexandra Wilkes, welcome to all of you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Good evening. Okay, so the president has just weighed in with a couple of new tweets, because in the past he said, listen, going after the popular vote would actually be an easier race to run. Tonight, this is what he's saying in a couple of tweets. Campaigning for the popular vote is much easier and different than campaigning for the Electoral College. It's like training for the 100-yard dash versus a marathon. The brilliance of the Electoral College is that you must go to many states to win, but the popular vote, you go to just the large states. The cities would end up running the country. Smaller states in the entire Midwest would end up losing all power, and we can't let that happen. I used to like the idea of a popular vote, but now realize the Electoral College is far better for the USA. Carl. Well, I think there's some wisdom in the idea that our country is better served by having a mechanism that takes a close election and gives the victor uh, a, a bump up, if you will. If you take a look at uh, the elections of, uh, say, 2000 or 2008 or 1992, it, it helped uh, Bill Clinton govern to be able to have the Electoral College give him a substantial majority and uh, allow him to go forward. We, we need to have things that draw us together, not things that tear us apart. And the idea that we would go to abolish the Electoral College, first of all, it's never going to happen. Two-thirds of the, both houses mm -hmm. of Congress have to approve, and three-quarters of the states have to ratify it. And, the, and states like Nebraska and the Dakotas and Idaho and Utah and Wyoming and even a lot of states in the South like Mississippi and Arkansas, they're not going to give up the, the, uh, the, the, the right to be considered uh, just as important as, as others by having people come to their states and campaign. Uh, I want to uh, read a tweet that comes uh, from Andrew Surabayan. He says this, that prominent Democrats have now endorsed packing the Supreme Court, changing the voting age to 16, which we're going to debate later, abolishing the Electoral College. So weird how their answer to losing always seems to be, let's just change the rules. I mean, Doug, are they opening themselves up to that kind of criticism by proposing these ideas? Well, I, I think that things like the Green New Deal, uh, Medicare for All, jobs for all, abolishing any obligations under student loans are a lot more hot buttons. I think the Electoral College is something that can and should be debated in a non-political setting, as it was after 1968 by Richard Nixon, Hubert Humphrey. I don't think, though, it's mainstream for the party to change the voting age to 16. Packing the Supreme Court is a bad idea. It was a bad idea when FDR considered it. It's a bad idea now. I think the Democrats have a big problem of moving way left on economic and social issues. Third trimester abortions being another one that you alluded to earlier. That, to me, is the problem. Some of these wacky ideas that you read out are just not really, I think, in play, but they sure won't help a party that needs to be in the center to win. I mean, and Alex, I feel like each day when I get up and we start to see what's bubbling in from the 2020 contenders and Iowa, New Hampshire, and all the places they, that they are, there's a new test every day. And if you don't sign on to it, essentially, um, the rest of the pack is pulling to the left. And so I'm not sure what's going to come next, but it seems like one of those, um, it happens in primaries. How do they self-correct this to the general, whomever ends up winning the nomination? Well, I'm not entirely, I'm not entire, entirely how they're going to do this, considering that a freshman congresswoman was able to come onto the scene and basically get all of the 2020 contenders to start agreeing with banning hamburgers. So, you know, this is a party that's being pulled way to the left. It has been being pulled to the left ever since the 2016 elections because these early contenders like Elizabeth Warren, um, you know, what they didn't want to have happen was what happened to Hillary Clinton in 2016, which was a challenge to her left. So you start, started to see these litmus tests emerge on Medicare for all. And now we're moving into even more extreme territories with the Electoral College, um, with, with uh, the um, the court packing. This is something that we've seen uh, on the court packing. We've seen Beto O'Rourke uh, be open to. We've seen Kamala Harris and Kirsten Gillibrand all be open to this idea. And as you mentioned, these are really ideas that are in response to just losing. There's no guiding or limiting principle for Democrats behind these ideas other than the, these institutions 
no longer serve them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they are being pulled all the way to the left, and I'm not sure there's time to course correct. Well, and if we look more broadly beyond the presidential race and all of these House races that will happen, and the Senate races as well, I mean, Carl, I know that you think, as many people do, um, there are a lot of Democrats on the Hill who are uncomfortable because it was those swing districts, those moderate districts that gave them back the House, and now the only headlines that we're seeing are the most radical members of their freshman class. They're getting all the attention. Yeah, they are, and uh, and you're right. And you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, that uh, how would this would play out in the primary and affect the general election. Remember, we're going to have an unusually long primary season. It's already started, and it's going to go about 18 months until the Democrats meet in, uh, you know, from start to finish. And when they finish, they're going to meet at their convention in, in Milwaukee. And then there's going to be just over four months between that convention and the general election. So the impression that the American people develop during this primary season of, of the Democratic Party with all these sort of far out uh, sort of socialist ideas and very left wing ideas is going to be hard to erase in a matter of four and a half months between the Democratic mm -hmm. Convention and the in the November 2020 general election. Yeah, and Doug, quickly, I mean, new polling uh, from CNN of all places shows that a vast majority of people think the economy is in good shape. They actually feel good about how they're doing. So is that, for now, an issue that's off the table for Democrats, and that's why they're focusing on some of these other outliers? It's not off the table. Issues like income inequality and wage stagnation remain strong, and the president's numbers are underwater. So uh, there is a democratic narrative, but it's a pro-growth, centrist, inclusive narrative, not redistribution, as most of the candidates are now emphasizing. All right, Doug, Carl, and Alex, please come Thank back you. soon. Great to have all of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.